All right, so I was supposed to be out on the Appalachian Trail tonight, but as you guys can see, stupid hurricane, tropical storm thing. But I thought it'd be a great time for me to kind of go over my gear that I use. So watching that, seeing where it's going to be tomorrow, hopefully I can get out on the trail. Either way, I'm going to be on the trail. I don't mind rain. It's just between this and the traffic getting from over here from Tennessee was a bit brutal. So anyways. Hey, what's going on guys? So last time I went backpacking on the Appalachian Trail, I kind of forgot to bring this. Um, also, I didn't really have the battery power and stuff like that. Um, so I have a few days now between my next job and I'm going to do the AT again. I kind of want to go over my gear. A lot of people seem to think that you need all this high-end gear and stuff. Um, the reality is you really don't. I mean, all you need is some stuff to get you out there and have some fun. I mean, I don't know why, like, you've watched all these reviews and stuff like that. It's like, you know, gear that's like $500 for a piece of, you know, nylon uh, tarp crap. You know, like, that for $500 is, I don't know. So, anyway, so I'm just going to go over, just make sure I have, like, Walmart gear and some Nantahala Outdoor Center here in North Carolina stuff. Um, and then also just some of my food gear I take with me. Uh, my winter stuff is uh, from Volcom snowboarding brand. Um, I think they have some of the best outdoor wear. I've had three sets of their clothing over the last, I don't know how many years, probably 10 years, and never had an issue with their, their jackets, pants, anything like that. As a matter of fact, I have them right now back in Norway. I have quite a bit of my Volcom gear over there. So I had to buy some new stuff for here. And this weekend, it's supposed to get down to like minus two degrees centigrade or maybe even colder because it'll be a, a piler. But uh, anyways, so let's go over my, over my gear real fast and what we're using this weekend, so. All right, so obviously you see I have quite a bit of gear, mostly just all the essential stuff you need, um, except, except these things right here. I mean, that's not really essential per se. I mean, nice to have because they emergencies, but anyways. So let's just start off with, with the most important thing that pretty much starts backpacking in general. Um, it's just the Ozark Trail 65 liter um, backpack that I got, you know, here at the Walmart. Um, I'm not going to say it's the best thing. I'm going to say it's the worst thing. Honestly, to me, it's a great backpack. It's like $64, I think, 68 with taxes and all that crap. And it carries all the stuff and still has space left over. All right, so like I said, this is the Ozark Trail 65 liter backpack. It has a lot of the same features as the high-end backpacks. You know, the hood, different compartments around the hood, um, adjustable straps to adjust the level of the backpack where it actually sits on your back. Has removable uh, ribs in here for you know the, the stiffness of the back. Has your water compartment there. You can have it on both sides of this backpack. Um, so top, obviously top load. Has the ability to actually even uh, access through the middle load here, which is maybe some clothing gear like jackets and stuff like that. You'll have right there. That's where I put my stuff. Um, quick, like I usually keep my, my meals, like quick meals here and stuff like that. Uh, also some quick essential stuff right here. This is a little flap that bucks off there. And down here, I keep my tent and all my, my camp gear right there. Um, this one actually has a built-in rain fly inside here. It's, it's like under here, you, just, you kind of see it right there and hear it. Velcros. Um, plenty of storage, you know, another size storage. Has your, uh, your belt thing here with you know side storage as well so i'm saying it's basically like you know it's the same thing as, as all those high-end backpacks but for 65 dollars and it's probably honestly i feel like a lot of the stuff's all made in the same chinese factory anyways so unless it says made in america um which is not many brands i think if any brands are made, made in america i mean just get a bloody backpack be happy with it you know um this is also the ozark trail uh mummy bag See, it's right at 30 degrees. I will say this is a very warm bag. Um, I can sleep basically just down in my, my boxer briefs and good to go. Now, you can see I have all my essential food that I'll be taking this next couple of days. Hygiene. These are, I feel, are a must. I mean, they're a great way to clean your water, um, especially because you'll be walking anyways, and it kind of shakes it for it. So I, what I always do is I... I have a side flask that I put over there on that. Use that to uh, for like um, storage water on top of my uh, my pouch flask here. So then I can have always fresh water ready to go when, I'm, when I need it. Really recommend it. Um, it's a really great idea. So first aid kit, 
emergency blanket, um, obviously my tools, headlamp. This is kind of a cool thing that actually came frame from a uh, Volkswagen. It's a, it's a light, obviously, but you hold it out and it's, and it's actually a, uh, a generator light, so you don't have to ever worry about batteries with this one. Uh, Multi-tool here, shovel for, you know, for when you gotta poop. Compass, actually I have another compass over here. I have, I have the main, main compass with the maps as well. Um, paracord, this is the tent, this is a one person tent. It's also the Ozark Trail tent, really great. Um, have the tarp here. I have my lighter, flint stick. These, you know, I don't know, a lot of people kind of say you probably shouldn't do what I'm doing. But you know when it's an emergency and it's like it is like it is this weekend it's, it's wet everything's gonna be bloody wet. I take this and just chop up the little pieces and that way I can start a fire no matter what. Um, not really supposed to do that, but hey, you know I mean it is what it is. <laughs> so uh, my trekking poles also Ozark Trail uh, spoon cup map. Now this is like what I was saying, my, my winter clothes, um, th this is really good actually for pretty much all conditions. Um, my thermals, a couple shirts and all that. I use this uh, for my trash. I keep it on the side of the bag. So like all this crap right here, I take out back with me. Recommend that for most people. A lot of people don't do it, but I do. That's just me. Um, going back over here, like I said, my power banks. This one's 20,000, this one's 5,000. So that should get me through for a few days. Um, you gotta use a spare one, obviously. And uh, that's pretty much it, obviously. My food, everybody needs food, but. So you can see it's not that much stuff. It's pretty much the essentials. Um, I will show you more tomorrow when I'm actually doing this out there on the trail. But, uh, but this is pretty much the essential stuff that you really need, or at least I need. Everyone has their own differences and stuff like that. Um, well, we're counting the oatmeal, but hey, it doesn't take up much space. So, all right, you guys. So, hope you enjoy. All right, guys. So, made it to a trail, not the trail I wanted to do. Uh, this is the Bartman Trail here in North Carolina. It's where Nana Hale Outdoor Center actually launches a rafts. Um, so, I'm going to do it up to the Sutherland Gap. Maybe a little further, depending on how time is right now. But uh, this hurricane storm thing, whatever knocked out the road to where I was supposed to go, which is Apple Tree Ranch uh, Trail. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this one instead right now. And as you can see, it's raining again. It's shocker, huh? Hopefully this, this uh, DJI gimbal is okay. Ooh, All right, so I made it towards my goal so far. Having a little bit of uh, downtime. Right. Okay, so I made it towards my first stop. Uh, just a quick little break. And uh, as you see, with the fall colors, nice little creek going down to the river down there, Nanahala River. And uh, so far, going pretty good. I've gone about a kilometer so far, so just go ahead and uh, keep it going, and we'll see how things go from this point forward. I just want to give you guys a quick update. I made it about five kilometers so far. So, fem kilometers for my Norsk uh, viewers. <laughs> Anyways, um, great view, but uh, still got about five more kilometers to go before I should be at my campsite, hopefully. Um, it's been a pretty br brutal uh, trek up the side of the mountain here. The hurricane knocked a lot of stuff in the way and it's just been making it really hard to get up here. And then you have all this leaves and debris, so it's like pretty, pretty slippery. So I'm going a lot slower than I was planning on it. Um, if you go to the map here, let's see, let me show you guys. On the map, helps out the right way. <laughs> I'm about right there where the 67, like, pen, what is that called? Trapezoid? Yeah, trapezoid. The little bend out is. So that's where I am right about now. And I need to be down there where the Sutherland Gap is, where that junction. So... I'm hoping to make it there in the next couple hours. We'll see. If not, we're setting camp up along the way. So, all right, see you. All right, guys, so I made it here. All right, guys, so I made it here to a trail junction. This is Long Bald, Long Bald, 
or London Bog Trail. I don't know. Fucking look at the map again. Anyways, point is I made it to this this junction here, and so I, I wanted to kind of show you guys something I think is pretty uh, interesting. Before I left my uh, my um, place of departure per se, I actually um, pointed my compass at uh, what do you call it at where that I parked. And then I set my uh, my my um, degrees to where it was, and so when you line this compass up with the north and all that, my north points that way, and the arrow actually points in the direction of where of where um, I should be going. So if I would have done this differently, had like set that differently, I'd probably be pointing differently. You know, obviously in a different direction because you want the the red, as I say, red in the shed. You know. Um, but uh, it was something I was just I was thinking to tell you guys that uh, before you leave out on an adventure, you know, always uh, set your compass to that destination where you left off of. You know, I mean, kind of helps, or at least do this. You know, um, set it and then write down. Okay, at you know, we'll say what's that like 55 degrees maybe. Um, that's where I parked the car. So in that way, you know. I mean, um, so you point this arrow at the car, wherever the the uh, north is or the red, you know, is you set that up and that's your true north. And then that way you can always get back right away if you have to. Um, instead of obviously doing this, you can take, you know, a more direct route. Granted, I don't know if it'd be worth it. I mean, because he wants to freaking, he wants to like trudge through all this crap. So, what was it? There we go. I mean, yeah, he would want to trudge through all this stuff. I mean, I don't know. But I guess if you had to, you know, get back in a hurry, you would know to go straight that way up and over the mountains and you'd be back at your car in no time. So kind of a little quick, you know, tip, whatever, just try to help you guys out. But anyway, so go back to the map here. Uh, let's see. So I am right here at this junction. I'm thinking about going here because obviously this one's pretty beat up right now. And maybe doing this loop down to Apple Tree. And the thing is, is I don't really know if it's if this apple tree is here, here, or, you know, somewhere else along, along the way. So I'll have to find out here in a little bit. Because so I'm thinking about doing is just doing a one straight shot instead of do, doing a loop. Because my original intention was to come down, do a loop, and come back. But uh, this trail is pretty beat up right now, and I think on the way back would be a lot harder than on the way out. So I'm um, thinking about maybe coming down here and then just taking a, a shuttle back to uh, my car. Anyways, so that's where I'm at. It took me uh, two hours, 21 minutes, 53 seconds to get there. You see it's 4.55 miles or about seven kilometers. Um, so only got a few more kilometers to go. All right guys, so I uh, made it to the first campsite. Might be the only campsite for me. Um, because it is Thursday, but it's 4.51, and, uh, yeah, it wasn't much of a choice. I got to this point in the trail, and as you can see, a lot of these trees are, like, knocked down, but I kind of came across this, uh, this little, like, camp area, so, and it sounds kind of good, so I got water over there. I can, I can clean, and, and I'm sure somewhere over here along this side, I can probably pick the trail back up tomorrow morning. But uh, hopefully we don't have any too inclement weather because, um, I mean, it's, it looks like it's, it's going to rain over there. I mean, you can kind of see something over there. But uh, what I mean as far as like, like we had with the hurricane. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and set up, set up camp. Um, I'll show you guys my one-person tent here once I get it set up. But other than that, let's get this done.
All right, got the fire going. Got a little dinner going right here. One thing I will say, the bag's not heat resistant, whatever. Like, they tell you to add the boiling hot water. They kind of forgot to mention that uh, the bags will be hot. Thank God I had some of those heat gloves. So anyways, got everything ready to go for the evening. Tents all set up. A little fire going. So y'all doubted me about, about bringing the fire logs. But you know what? It worked. Nice little fire. Might might dry this wood out. I'm not really I'm not really planning on this wood drying. But uh got a fire for the night. Or part of the night at least. We'll see how long it lasts. It's supposed to last like two and a half hours, I think. One and a half hours, something like that. I don't know. Anyways, it's only two and a half pounds, so it's well worth it. So hopefully uh if I can get the wood to catch, the actual the natural wood, then I can leave the fire running for most of the night but uh other than that call it a day man so i think the gear all held up pretty good and and uh yeah so um quick side note one thing i didn't mention to you guys um i actually uh the gear i'm using as far as like clothes i'm wearing and uh, shoes is columbia shoes uh crestwood three or something like that they're like supposed to be their army tech waterproof water resistant um so far seems to be working the pants are Panera, Piranha, Piranha something like that. Uh, Zen stretch pants. And then I got the uh, Columbia like like rain jacket. So that's what I have for like my light gear. And of course I told you I have my Volcom gear as well, which should be good for like Saturday, Sunday when it gets down to minus three degrees centigrade. But uh, but yeah, man, so I'm pretty stoked. Got my little campsite set up now and bag of foods over there up in the wood trees whatever you want to call it let me see if you guys can see it let's see if you can zoom in on it that's about as good as i'm gonna get <laughs> if you look it's like right oh, oh. The damn wood so wet I just can't get it to really go but got a little something going that's all that matters all right so I'm in the tent and my feet don't touch I'm trying to there we go they don't touch over there got plenty of headroom well, I guess I got a lot of headroom not more than I thought well, okay um Oops. Okay, so feet don't touch, and got plenty of headroom, obviously. So yeah, doing pretty good. I uh, think I'll have a good night. See you guys in the morning. Well, made it through the night. As you can see, it's quite a bit of condensation. Actually, there's so much that everything's just soaked in here. We had a little rain last night, so it's not from the rain, just literally condensation because I dried out with my t-shirt. But oh my gosh. So, you can see even the freaking bag's like drenched. I mean, this is just fucking ridiculous. So, uh... Not really sure this tent's meant for this kind of weather. Probably not, I'm gonna say. Um, definitely need some more ventilation. Like, it would probably be good if they had a ventilation right here. And just had like a little rain fly for that part. To look, with the heat and, and moisture escape. And this is just, whew. So, uh, all right, well. Let's... But besides that, I mean, everything else did. It's job. 
I mean, see there's some more puddle of condensation. I will say this would be kind of an interesting experience to, uh, or experiment I should say, um, to see how uh, much water you lose in the middle of the night. That's a lot of freaking water, man. Jesus Christ. Well, guys, you can see I got everything out of the tank, per se. Um, weirdest thing in the world. It's not really that wet as far as anything else goes in there. But this thing, my bag holder, is like just drenched. Almost like I, I don't even know, like it was like caught in the rain or something. But it wasn't. That was inside with me. So I'm thinking this was probably soaking a lot of the water up. Um, other than that, not too bad. I mean, I will say I'm not much of a patch sleeper, but I think with this tent, to get a pad because you know uh, that is way too much condensation in there and it's just going to be like that all the time so it's just due, due to poor ventilation but uh, other than that look forward to uh, heading back to the house today and uh, trying again sometime during the week all right guys peace all right, all right as you can see everything's cleaned up my water bottle ready to go. Bag's ready to go. Pole's ready to go. I'm ready to go. So, my take on the Ozark Trail one person tent is you definitely need to spray it down with some uh, coating, kind of help a little bit with the uh, water repellency. Also, um, figure out a way to get some better ventilation in that thing because holy crap, I think it was drenched on the inside. But, uh, Overall, to the purpose, lightweight. It's a good buy for 20 bucks, 26 dollars and change. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but uh, you know, obviously, uh, it all comes down to your comfortability. You know, are you okay? You know, being drenched in water when you wake up in the morning. Most people aren't, especially when it's kind of chilly. But it wasn't too bad. Um, maybe if I had a had a mat, maybe it would help. But uh, the backpack here. Definitely good. Um, did this job worked well. So uh, I'm gonna head back. I was gonna continue on the trail that way, but it looks like it's already blocked off from the hurricane. I know if I go this way, it's six miles out roughly. I'm not percent sure how far that way is, and then I'll probably have to call for a shuttle. So I just walk back to the car. Um, next time I'll do a little more planning, try to figure out this trail a little better. But really cool trail is called the uh, Bartram Trail. No, oh, sorry. The Bartram Trail here in North Carolina. It's uh, about 20 minutes south of the Nantahala Outdoor Center. And a lot of side trails too, as you guys saw. So, all right. Well, hopefully uh, everything goes well from this point forward. And we'll see you guys at the car. Well, I made it back to the car. Had a fun night over here in the, uh, the Bartram Trail. Definitely recommend it. Uh, I would say the entrance to the trail is very challenging, very steep, a lot of stuff to, uh, to hop over and then uh, climb under. Um, probably could have kept going and made it fine. I didn't realize how fast I would be moving today. It moved, moved a lot faster today than I did yesterday. So uh, it took me uh, two hours and 40 minutes total to get back to the car from the camp, which was six miles. Um, yeah, so definitely I uh, think it was a nice little trip. Um, you know, maybe next time I come out, I can do, do a little longer, which is what I wanted to do originally. <laughs> um, between the hurricane, not to get back to Florida to go do so, uh, Halloween. But uh, other than that, everything's good. Um, the backpack held up pretty well. Definitely say that. The poles were good. Shoes were excellent. So, thing about these shoes, this morning, uh, this shoe particularly, I guess I had like a... Uh, I don't know, I guess I had like not put it under the, the, vest, the vestibule very well. The vestibule. You know. um, it was just drenched in water. I mean, like a like full on puddle of water in there. Had to dump it out. By the time I put it on, walked around, put everything up in the bag, and made it probably a mile into the trail, she was completely dried out. So these are the Columbia Crestwood, I think, threes, and they are really good. Highly recommend them. Overall, great trip. See you guys in the next trip.